I came here to study about O-rings. That's good. It's interesting that O-rings are widely used, but people don't care about the details. First off, I'm going to tell you about the sealing mechanism of O-rings. I kind of have an idea. The reaction force of a compressed O-ring provides sealing mechanism. Yeah, I agree to your explanation. The reaction force prevents fluid from flowing. When the pressure of the fluid goes up, the fluid presses the O-ring against the groove, and then the O-ring is deformed more. That makes the reaction force stronger, and which means that the sealing has become more effective. The mechanism is called, self-sealing action. If you give more pressure to the fluid, the O-ring will be extruded and get broken. The O-ring can no longer seal the fluid. How much pressure can an O-ring take? The maximum pressure that an O-ring can take, depends on the clearance of the groove, the hardness of the O-ring, and the strength of the O-ring. The smaller the clearance is, the higher pressure the O-ring can take. If the clearances are the same, a harder O-ring can take higher pressure. And of course, the strength of the O-ring is also an important factor, to withstand high pressure. Doesn't compression value matter with the maximum pressure that an O-ring can take? I feel like the O-ring can take more pressure if I compress the O-ring more. When the pressure increases, self-sealing action works well. So, it's not that the more you compress the O-ring, the more pressure the O-ring can take. Even if compression value is small, the O-ring is compressed when the pressure increases. And which is the same as if compression value were large. Right. However, compression value becomes important when the pressure is low. Should I compress an O-ring as much as I can? If you give large compression value, you need to be careful of permanent strain. Permanent strain is the amount of how much the O-ring cannot return to the original shape, after you release the compressed O-ring. If you are like, I'll compress the O-ring as much as possible because the pressure is low. The permanent strain becomes easier to remain, and then the O-ring may lose the sealing performance as time passes. In addition to that, if you compress an O-ring too much, the sliding resistance increases. That may give a damage to the O-ring. Then how much should I compress an O-ring? You can check the catalog of the O-ring manufacturer. The catalog has groove dimensions for O-rings. If you follow the dimensions, you can maintain proper compression ratio, which is from 10% to 30% of the thickness of an O-ring. I see. Let's say I maintain the proper compression ratio, how much pressure can the O-ring take? In a catalog. You can check this kind of diagram. The diagram tells you how much pressure your O-ring can take. Does durometer A mean the hardness of an O-ring? Yup. I cannot imagine how hard it is, even though I know a durometer A value, like 70 or 90. Please take a look at this chart. By the way, the hardness of commonly used O-rings is 70. Thank you. I can imagine how hard it is. According to this diagram, if the hardness of an O-ring is 70, and the clearance is 0.2 mm, the O-ring can take up to 9 MPa. Am I correct? The diagram says so. However, you have to check whether the O-ring itself can withstand 9 MPa or not. This chat shows how much pressure an O-ring can withstand. Thank you. Actually I have a question. Could you show me the O-ring extrusion limits diagram again?
According to this diagram, the harder an O-ring is, the more pressure the O-ring can withstand, right? If so, I think I should use the hardest O-rings. Am I right? If you use a hard O-ring, you need to be careful to prevent the O-ring from getting damaged, because the sliding resistance becomes larger. When should I use a soft O-ring? They say that a soft O-ring is used when the structure around the O-ring is weak. The soft O-ring can maintain proper compression value, even if the structure is weak. But actually I've not selected soft O-rings, and I've not seen a soft O-ring used either. I am starting to understand O-rings. How can I specify an O-ring I need when I order it? It depends on a manufacturer as you can guess, but you can specify an O-ring like this. That's more complicated than I expected. Okay. I'll explain it one by one. Firstly, you need to specify which material you'd like to use. If you look at a catalog, you can check the characteristics and the hardness of each material. Nitrile rubber is commonly used, but you need to select proper material depending on which fluid you are going to use. Let me tell you about dimensional specification later. Secondly, grade is about the appearance quality of the O-ring. But actually, I have not care about it, and I have never been asked which grade I need when I order O-rings. I see. What is dimensional specification all about? Literally, it specifies the size of an O-ring. I'm going to explain it based on the O-ring standard in Japan, but the theories don't matter with where you are. P-series and G-series are commonly used. S-series is rarely used. V-series is for vacuum. If you order P-50, you'll get a P-series O-ring with diameter of 50 millimeters. What is the difference between P-series and G-series? In Japan, the seals used for dynamic applications are called packing, while the seals used for static applications are called gasket. P-series means packing. They are used for dynamic applications. G-series means gasket. They are used for static applications. I see. But again, what is the actual difference between P-series and G-series? The thickness of O-rings in P-series, is different from the thickness of O-rings in G-series. A thin O-ring may be twisted, if it is used for dynamic applications. You should use thick O-rings for dynamic applications. In other words, the O-rings in P-series are thicker, than the O-rings in G-series. Is it okay if I use P-series for static applications? That's no problem. Or rather, it's better if you use P-series for static applications, because that makes permanent strain difficult to remain. Actually, thick O-rings are more difficult to have permanent strain than thin O-rings. If you have space for a groove, and if you are not on a tight budget, you should use P-series for static applications. By the way, the thickness in S-series is less than the thickness in G-series. If you can't have space for a groove, S-series can be one of your options. You have other options other than O-rings. D-rings and X-rings are resistant to torsion. They may be one of your options, if you are in a treble of O-ring torsion. I understand. Is there anything I should be careful of? Firstly, you need to be careful of surface roughness. It's obvious that surface roughness is important, when O-rings are used in dynamic applications. However, even when O-rings are used in static applications, you should be careful of surface roughness, 
because even if an O-ring is used in static application, the O-ring moves and rubs against the groove when the pressure changes. That's why surface roughness is always important. You can check a catalog if you'd like to know what good surface roughness for your O-ring is. The smaller surface roughness is, the better it'll be. However, you should avoid mirror finish, because the sliding resistance becomes larger. Secondly, you need to be careful of the shape of corners. If the shape is sharp, it will give damage to an O-ring, when the pressure becomes high. The shape has to be round only a little bit. If you check a catalog, you can know what a good dimension of each R is. You have to design grooves based on the dimensions on a catalog. Also, you need to be careful of the shape of holes and shafts, in order not to give damage to O-rings when you insert the O-rings. You have to design holes and shafts based on a catalog. I understand that O-rings look simple parts but, we have to take good care of them. Could I give you the last question? Of course. I've heard of backup rings, but what are they for? Did you still remember this diagram? If you'd like to prevent your O-ring from extruding, a backup ring will help you. There are three kinds of backup rings. The most effective one is, an endless type, because it doesn't have a slit. However, since it doesn't have a slit, you may have hard time to insert it. You need to extend an endless backup ring before you insert it to a groove. Even if you successfully insert it, you need to wait for the endless backup ring to shrink. If you don't wait for it, the endless backup ring may get damaged when you insert it to a hole. Some people purchase an extra endless backup ring because they might mistakenly break an endless backup ring. Are you one of them? Ah, uh, you are.